Good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Joshua. I'm going to be your presenter today. I hope everybody can hear me okay. It's promptly noon Eastern time here. Welcome to all of you, wherever you may be joining us from. Well, it's afternoon here in the eastern east coast or eastern side of the country. Uh, before we get started, a few things. We're talking about uh, payroll using the direct deposit feature, calculating payroll using direct deposit, um, voiding EFT pays. This is a topic is taken from our P102 workbook, pages five through nine. So if you have the training workbooks for payroll, you can turn to uh, page five, and that is the material I am using for today's event. Um, if you don't have the workbooks, of course, you may purchase those from the training workbooks page on our website, churchwindows.com. Uh, we do try to follow along, use the workbooks as basis for the webinars whenever possible, just to help you get a better kind of a full picture of how the software works. Uh, if you have questions, please type those into the questions portion of the webinar control panel. Um, I'll do my best to keep an eye on those. If I don't get them answered during the event, I'll certainly do my best to get them answered afterwards. Uh, please keep the questions on topic, meaning we're not like talking about the setting up of the direct deposit in payroll. We're only talking about paying by direct deposit, using the paying pay function on that. I think we have a video out on the website right now um, that covers the setup, albeit I'm sure we're probably going to do that, have that topic uh, re-recorded here sometime uh, you know, between now and the end of the year. We're here together um, until about 12:20 Eastern time. Uh, you know, I'll do my best to you know get you know stop at 20 minutes after the hour, uh, just out of respect of your taking time to spend with us today. We are recording today's event. The updated uh, version or the today's uh, version of that will be out on our website here, probably sometime in the next you know day or two. Uh, so you can certainly go back and revisit that um, later if you wish. Um, the okay, so very important that we understand here before we get started on our topic. It was pointed out that I, they re, folks really wanted me to mention this today to everybody that's joining us. Uh, just be aware, folks. We're on right now. Our current version of payroll is version 2021 SR3. Uh, many of you may have received and opened the email that we had sent a week or so ago about a new 941 being available or released. Uh, just so if you've not already submitted your tw uh, second quarter 941, please hold off on that. And you have until July 31st to submit or file the form, but we are working on getting a new form released between now and the middle of July. Uh, our programmers are hard at work. I still think we're waiting on the final draft copy of that or the final copy of the government copy of the new 941 but we'll have payroll 2021 SR4 sometime out between now and the middle portion of July is my understanding, okay? Uh, if you've already filed your 941, I'm not sure what you'll need to do about that. Uh, you may need to contact the IRS regarding how they want you to proceed with that. They may simply want you to resubmit the new revised form when it becomes available, but you'll need to contact them to find out. So, okay, so let's get into our topic here. So on page five, it talks about paying by direct deposit. So the assumption at this point is, based on our webinar today, is that we already have our employees set up. All of the information regarding their account and bank and accounting and number information is in, uh, in the setup, under data setup, and in the employee file. Okay, so we're not going to talk about that today. Uh, I do want to pass on and let you know that in our new payroll rewrite that we're expecting to release at some point here, all again, I don't have a firm release date on it, you will be able to, in the new payroll rewritten version, be able to have uh, an employee's pay split over two different bank accounts. So exciting changes coming in the payroll rewrite at some point here, okay? So top of page five talks about, note, we strongly encourage you to make a backup of the payroll data prior to calculating pay using the direct deposit. Frankly, folks, you can never have too many backups. I say in my support calls, you know, I've never once said to a single user, stop, you're backing up your data too much. Never happens. So backing up your data at any point is always a good thing. Uh, it gives you an undo should you need it. Uh, so, you know, but certainly with regards to direct deposit, it's certainly a good idea to get in the habit of backing that data up before you do that too, albeit the payroll. Direct deposit pays can be voided, as we'll see later on. So the assumption here is, as it's kind of talking about there, it talk, you know, jumps into that page there, top of pie, page five, about, it's showing calculate payroll six. Well, the assumption is we've gone through, we've entered our 
pay date and settlement date. So let's say our settlement date is today, but the pay period ends on the 25th. Um, now this, frankly today, folks, with this being 6.30 and my pay date, settlement date, be, date being 6.30, the EFT file that I would create the 30th today would not be enough lead time probably for my bank to do that. Normally you'll need to contact your financial institution to determine how much lead time they need on that file in order to pay folks electronically. But in most cases today would not be enough. So they, we would need to put that out probably at least two, maybe even three or four days ahead of time. Okay. But kind of contact your financial institution to find out what exactly how many lead days they need on the file. So uh, we're not going to change that. It's just easy to put that in there today, but it would probably need to be there. So I'm going to do a combination of both my direct deposit employees and my regular employees. Uh, so we're going to go to next. I would process my regular pay, putting in my hours as needed, just like I would normally. I've got a combination of direct deposit and EFT files uh, employees here. We go to next. I always recommend clicking Browse Payments, verifying that the net pay is what I want it to be. It all looks good. Don't need to make any changes. We're going to go to Next. It now I've, I'm not choosing to print my reports, but what this when now we're at the at the screenshot that's here on page five that shows what we're seeing on page five of our training workbook pages there. So we're going to post a payroll notice if we want to create the EFT transaction file that we're going to send the bank send to the bank. You've got to check this box here that says create EFT transaction file. Okay. So then we're telling the software that we're actually producing that EFT file to transmit to or send to our bank. I am going to print checks, assign check numbers for the remaining employees, and we're going to transfer it to accounting. So we're simply going to click finish here. It then pops up and says payroll posted to employee file successfully. We click OK. It now opens up our screenshot down at the bottom of page five, where it's now creating the EFT transaction file to upload or send to our, or that we can create or copy and then send to our bank. I don't want to check the box on the left labeled stub printed, okay? It's not asking if I want to print it, it's asking if I've already printed it and do I need to actually print preview those reports, okay? So because I need to print my stubs, if I do check that, I can still go back in and print them later. But I'm just going to do it now. So I'm not going to check that stub printed box. We go to next. Here's my two direct deposit employees. We're going to go to next. It now opens up a preview of my stubs for those employees. So it's taken a second here to generate that. But notice here, I like to point out in the middle here of this page that this is what makes these direct deposit stubs unique as it says to be deposited via electronic transfer right there. Okay. So I want to make sure there's plain paper in my printer. So then I would send it to my printer in the upper left corner. Okay. Uh, you know, I just like I would checks, I would hold off and I would grab them off the printer, make sure that they're presentable to my direct deposit employees. So then when I go to next, I'm gonna now I'm gonna check the box that says stub printed. If I actually printed those, it would check those automatically for me. Uh, so then now I would say, yep, the stubs are good. We've printed those. I would now click finish. Okay. And then it pops up with our dialog box that we see at the bottom of page six that says EFT transaction file has been created. Okay. So I'm going to click okay on that. Now it opens up my, you know, check printing for my regular employees. I just like to show how you can actually combine both your direct deposit employees with regular checks that you're, you know, you're printing for your other employees. So I would, you know, enter the starting check number on that. Again, I wouldn't click check printed. I would go next and now I would put check stock in my printer. Again, sending it to my printer in the upper left corner. Again, holding off until I've grabbed those actual physical checks off the printer before, you know, clicking, checking these boxes that says they printed correctly. Again, I have full control to put those checks back into the print queue if for some reason they're getting you know, out of sequence or if the printer, you know, ruins those checks or something. Okay. So I want to hold off and respond to this question until the checks I've, you know, I've examined the checks and they're considered presentable. Otherwise I'm going to check those and say, yes, finish highlighted checks printed correctly. And now at per page seven, it opens up my transfer to accounting window, just like I would normally. 
and I would you know transfer that into accounting just like I would like I want to got to get those in my books so it's transferring payroll data to accounting okay we're gonna try clicking continue here I'm not sure what that problem was I'm sorry folks unsure what that is well let's close it close payroll sorry about that unsure what that problem was that was unexpected so let's go ahead and bring up payroll again here uh, all right, so we're going to we're going to assume that it transferred into accounting normally here. Okay. So then on page 7 it talks about now copying the EFT file to then upload to my bank. So to do that, now we would go to payroll and we'd go right down here to copy EFT file at the very bottom of our menu. And now notice I've got, you know, June 30th is my pay date. I'm not going, you know, it's going to copy it to A, so I'm going to choose browse then I'm going to choose where I want to send that EFT file. So maybe let's drop it onto our desktop. It's easy to show you that. But I could send it anywhere. Put it on a flash drive, set it into downloads folder or documents or a unique folder you set up. It's your choice. Okay. So we now choose the location and then we're going to click copy file. It says file successfully copied to C users Rachel desktop EFT 210630.dat. Click OK. Okay. So now my work is done in payroll. Okay, so now if we minimize this, right here is my file. I'm dragging that here over to the middle so everybody can see that. So now I would then upload this EFT, you know, 210630.dat file to my bank, however they want me to get that to them. You know, whether it's uploading it through a secure link on their website or, you know, emailing it as a file attachment or you know, physically walking it in on like a flash drive or a disk or something, you know. But again, that's, you have to find that out, um, how the bank wants you to transmit that file to them as part of the setup process that we're not covering today, okay. So as page eight talks about is, uh, you, you know, you, you have to get that to the bank, but it's pointing out how it was successfully copied to the location where I wanted to save it. Um, a very important feature or statement that's made there at the middle of page eight on our payroll uh, pages there talks about how this is not an encrypted file from Church Windows payroll. Okay, most websites and, and many times financial institutions will have a secure socket layer that will help protect your data. But if data, but if not, you may need to contact, you know you know purchase encryption software. Hopefully not. But if you really want to ensure the file is secure, it's important that you know that we do not uh, provide or encrypt the actual file that's transmitted to the bank. Okay. Now, whether that's going to occur in our new version, I don't know. I've not heard anything about that. Um, probably not, though. Okay. But most times anymore, financial institutions, banks are going to just require that you upload it through a secure link on their website that will ensure that that's protected. Okay. All right, so finally, at the bottom of page eight there and into page nine, it talks about avoiding EFT pays. So how we do that, assuming we've not uploaded the file to the bank and employees have not been paid, you know, once I send that to the bank, it's pretty much a done deal. But if I realize at some point before I've sent it to the bank that there's a problem, I can go into payroll and right down here, about halfway down, I can choose the one called void EFT pays, okay? So when we click on that, it opens up all of my pay dates in 2021 where I have created or, or calculated uh, an EFT payroll. So again, it's supporting my January 15th and June 30th batch dates. So I can choose a particular date, in this case June 30th, and I can void that. However, what's important to understand about voiding EFT pays, folks, is it's all or nothing. I cannot choose just one employee and void their EFT pay. Notice when I clicked on one of them, it, it selected all of them, in the, both of them in this case, Jerry and Larry. Okay? So even if I've got w just one problem with one employee, I have to void the entire EFT pay and recalculate it for all my direct deposit employees. This does not impact my folks that I had checks for. Okay? So... All of them, my, my, my employees who receive checks, I don't have to void those. I just would have to void and recalculate for my 
to direct deposit employees, which of course I have control over and can do. Okay, so but you know uh, if I do clear all again, if I click on Larry only, it selects both Jerry and Larry. Okay, and I simply click void in the upper right corner. It says two entries voided successfully. Okay, to continue, cancel to undo. So if I now click OK, it now will prompt me that it says payroll entries were voided that had previously been transferred to accounting. Do I want to reverse the accounting transactions? I definitely want to say yes to that. Okay, I might error out on me. I don't know, folks. I'm sorry. Uh, hopefully it won't. Yeah, so now it says two payroll transactions reversed in accounting. I'm sure what that problem was before. So we simply click OK. So now that EFT pay for June 30th is now voided. I can go back in and recalculate as needed for my two employees if I need to, you know, make any changes to their file, gross pay, you know, whatever I need to do, and then, and then upload that. I can only produce one EFT file per day. So once I create an EFT file for any employees, it's not going to let me create another EFT file. So if I miss an employee, and I uploaded the file, I would have to maybe print a check for them and present that to them or post it for a different day. The software will not let us calculate and post um, two EFT pay, uh, uh, create two EFT files for the same pay date, in, at least in our current right version of payroll. That may be something that changes, but I had not heard anything. So that, folks, is our topic for the day.